Hello and welcome to another episode of Maths with Mrs. Banks where we make maths fun and easy to learn. And in this video, we're going to look at another grade 11 functions question, particularly focusing on the exponential function, even though we have a parabola, which a lot of people struggle with. That's why I'm doing another parabola video. And now this comes from the November 2018 Department of Education paper one. And question six goes, the diagram below shows the graphs of f of x equals to minus in bracket x minus three all squared plus 25, which is the equation of the parabola. This is the other standard format that you learn in grade 10. And then g of x equals to two in bracket one over two all to the power of x plus one minus four. And that is the equation of the exponential function g. Graph f cut the x-axis at a and c that is the parabola the y-axis at e that's the y-intercept and there's a turning point at d okay. graph g cuts the x-axis at a right and the y-axis at b so they have a common x-intercept there which is the point a Write down the equation of the asymptote of G, that is question 6.1. Remember, G has an asymptote, right? And the asymptote will be given in the equation. Now, the equation goes G of X equals to 2 in bracket 1 over 2 all to the power of X plus 1 minus 4. And this part here is the asymptote. So, the asymptote is Y equals to negative 4. That's the equation of the asymptote so this will be 6.1 6.1 the asymptote of g is y equals to negative 4 6.2 Next question, write down the coordinates of D. Remember, D is the turning point of the parabola. Now, the parabola has got the standard format. This standard format is A in bracket X plus P all squared plus Q. Now, the turning point of the parabola is simply minus P Q. So, now... 6.2. Remember f of x equals to minus and bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 25. Let's just double check this. So we, and that is correct. So therefore, the turning point when your standard format is this is negative p q. Now we need to find what p is. All right, now. Here is px minus 3 equals to 0. That's how you find p. Therefore, x equals to... x equals to 3. That is your minus p. Remember, your p is negative 3. The p is equals to negative 3. Therefore, minus p will be minus in bracket negative 3, which gives us positive 3. If you're in doubt, then just equate all of this to zero and solve for x, and that will be your negative p. It will be the x-coordinate of the turning point. Now, q is simply the y-intercept in this case. Now, q is equal to 25. Therefore, the turning point will be, therefore, the coordinates of d, which happen to be the turning point, will be, 325. Does it make sense? Of course it does make sense. The point D is on the first quadrant, which is both positive X and positive Y. All right, there we go. Write down the range of F. The range of any function is all permissible Y values, which are part of that function and is not and do not make the function undefined. Now for f, the maximum turning point is at d. The maximum point is at d. Remember d has got the coordinates 325. 
Now the range of F will be anything less than or equals to 25. Range of F. Y is less than or equals to 25 because that's where the maximum turning point is. Okay, 6.4. Next question. Calculate the length of EB. Let's look at what EB. EB. We need to figure out what first what the coordinates of the turning point, I mean of the y-intercept of F is so E is the y intercept. Let's find, and then we also need to find the coordinates of B, which is the y intercept of G. All right, let's find the x inter the y intercept of F. Okay, we need to find the coordinates of E and the coordinates of B. E is the y-intercept of f. Remember, f of x is minus x. Okay. x minus 3 all squared plus 25. Now, the y-intercept, to find the y-intercept, you make x0. You make x0. So, what we do is we substitute zero into this equation and it will give us the y intercept therefore f of zero which is the y intercept equals to minus in bracket zero minus three all squared plus 25 and that gives us negative that is nine plus 25 so that's 25 minus nine and that gives us 16 25 minus 9 please use a calculator always to so that therefore the coordinates of e therefore the coordinates of e are 0 16 now let's find the coordinates of b b is the y intercept of g b is the y-intercept of g all right remember g has got this equation let's go back g has got the equation 2 in bracket 1 over 2 all to the power of x plus 1 minus 4 2 in bracket 1 over 2 all to the power of x plus 1 minus 4. Now the y-intercept, okay, to find the y-intercept, you make x0 to, therefore, g of 0 will be equals to 2 in bracket 1 over 2 all to the power of 0 plus 1 minus 4 which is equals to 2 in bracket 1 over 2 to the power of 1 minus 4 so that is 2 times a half and that is 1 minus 4 and that gives us negative 3 therefore the coordinates of b are 0 negative 3 therefore the coordinates of b are 0 negative 3 now in order to find the length of eb therefore the length of eb The length of EB is simply equals to, let me show you, the length of EB, here are the coordinates, let's, okay, the coordinates are, that was what, um, 16, and this is 0, coordinates these are 0 negative 3 
zero negative three so in order to figure out the length of eb you simply add the length of so this will be oe plus ob all right eb will be equal to oe plus ob oe is how many units that is 16 units and then ob is simply three units because if you go from zero to negative three that takes you three steps that is three units now let's add that 16 plus 3 that is equals to 19 so the length of eb is 19 units and that's how you find the answer to this type of questions next is 6.5 determine the value of x for which f is decreasing f is decreasing here we've got the turning point that's where it is at its maximum that's where it's neither increasing or decreasing that's why it's called a turning point all right now notice that to the left when you're going all the way from negative infinity to the right and that's how you determine whether a function is increasing or not if your function goes up that means it is increasing but if it goes down as you go from left to right then your function is decreasing now when is this f increasing f is increasing when your x is all the way from negative infinity to the x coordinate of the turning point d which is three therefore your answer will be x is less than three so that is 6.5 f of x is increasing for x is less than or equals to 3. You can say less than 3, that's also fine because strictly at 3, it's neither increasing or decreasing. So they usually they accept both. You can just say x is less than three or x is less than or equals to three that will be acceptable six point six calculate the average gradient between a and b that should be easy so we've got the point a what are the points a that is the x-intercept all right of both the equations you can use whichever to figure out what the x-intercepts are now in order to figure out what the x-intercepts are you just make y zero all right, so you take any equation, both of them have an x-intercept there, so you can either use this one, the g, or you can use the f, the choice is yours. Now, let's use any, I prefer f because it's easier to work with. Okay, let's use f to find the x-intercept. f is going to have two. If you prefer g, you can use g because it will have only one. All right. And that is 6.6. .6. Remember, f of x equals to minus in bracket x minus 3 or plus 25. Now, x-intercept, to find the x-intercept, you make y0 and solve. Make y0 and solve. So, let's make y0, therefore, 0 will be minus in bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 25 now we take 25 to the or let's take the x the whole x minus 3 all squared to the right hand side all right there are many ways you can solve this one okay let's square find square root of both sides so that will be x minus 3 equals to plus or minus square root of 25 that's the shortcut way x minus 3 equals to plus or minus 5 therefore x minus 3 equals to 5 or x minus 3 equals to negative 5. All right, therefore, this makes x equals to 5 plus 3, which is equals to 8. 
or x equals to negative 5 plus 3 which is equals to negative 2. Now this makes sense that your parabola will have two roots because that's what we have in this situation. Now one is negative and the other one is positive. Now for the point that we are looking for, point A, the one that is valid, the x-intercept that is valid is the one that goes negative 2. So the point there has got the coordinates, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0. All right, so there we go. The one that is valid is the negative. Okay, this one. Therefore... The coordinates of A are negative 2, 0. All right, now let's find the gradient. Okay, we've got the coordinates of B are 0, negative 3, and the coordinates of A are negative 2, 0. And we are supposed to find the average gradient between the two points. All right, you can draw a small line there. Okay, the gradient between the two points. That's what we are trying to find. A is negative 2, 0, and B is 0, negative 3. A, okay, coordinates of B. Are 0, negative 3. All right, so the gradient of AB is it goes to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2. That is the equation of the gradient of any straight line between any two points. Now, you can choose any of the points to be x2, y2. So, 0 minus negative 3, that's what I choose. But make sure that when you choose which one you're going to be x2, y2, you stick to the order. All right, so that's 0 minus negative 3 and then negative 2 minus 0, or else your answer will be 0 if you, I mean, will be incorrect if you don't follow that. So that is 3 over negative 2. So, therefore, the gradient of AB equals to negative 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2. All right, next question. 6.7 graph t is obtained by reflecting g about the x-axis write down the range of g now if this is reflected about the x-axis it means that you flip this upside down and this is what's gonna it's gonna look like you flip it upside down let me show you this is what it's going to look like to look like this there that is the graph of t that will be the graph of t all right mm -hmm. now what will the range of let's see write down the range of t now notice that the asymptote will now change to be on 3 okay instead of negative 3 it will be flipped up back to 3 so the range will be anything less than 3 not greater than yes anything less than y equals to 3 that is the range okay that is 6.7 6.7 range of t is y is less than 3 6.8 
if p of x equals to f of x plus 2, write down the coordinates of the turning point of p. So first of all, let's figure out what p of x is. So p of x equals to f of x plus 2. If p of x equals to f of x plus 2, this is what f of x plus 2 will be equal to. That will be equals to f of x is minus in bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 25 and you add 2. Alright, so that will be minus in bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 27. Alright, here is the turning point. Okay, turning point is... All right, here is the turning point. The turning point will simply be equal to 327. That will be the turning point. Now, 6.9. Let's go back. Determine the value of k for which the straight line y equals to 2x plus k will be a tangent to f. Alright, so here, if it is going to be a tangent to f and the equation is a positive, that means it will lean to the right. It has a positive gradient and a tangent touches the graph only at one point. Okay, there is where the tangent will cut the graph. Okay, let's make it a bit thicker. There is the tangent. It's going to be on the left-hand side because that's where the gradient is going to be positive. Now, where the graph and the tangent cut, I mean, meet, they must be equal. So what we do is we equate them. All right, 2x plus k. Two x plus k will be tangent. Will be a tangent to f. When f of x equals to two x plus k. All right, f of x is negative in bracket x minus 3 all squared plus 25 equals to 2x plus k. They must be equated. Now we'll be able to figure out okay, what the value of k is. And I'll show you exactly how we do that. Now expand this. All right. That will be x minus in bracket x squared. Okay. If you expand x minus 3, let me show you x minus 3 all squared. That will be equals to the first time squared plus 2 in bracket. The product of the terms with their signs and then the square of the last term. That gives us x squared minus 6x. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Plus 25 goes to 2x plus k. Okay, therefore now we all right let's expand this okay that becomes minus x squared minus x squared plus 6x minus 9 plus 25 equals to 2x plus k all right take everything to the left hand side okay first let's clean the left hand side up that is minus x squared plus 6x. 25 minus 9. That is equals to 16. So that will be plus 16. Equals to 2x plus k. Take everything to the left hand side. And that gives us negative x squared plus 6x. Plus 16 minus 2x plus k. 
equals to zero. Why? Because we need this in standard format so we can find delta and delta will figure will tell us when the two meet without giving us two solutions at the end of the day and i'm gonna explain to you and demonstrate now what i mean so that is 4x plus 16 minus k that is equals to zero all right now for this to be a tangent let's go back for this to be a tangent for the green line to be a tangent the graph must the line must meet the graph only at one point if it's not a tangent it will obviously meet the graph at more than one point which is the maximum of two points now in order for this two to meet at only one point you must have only one solution or one root for this expression meaning that your delta this expression must have only one root and when does that happen that's when your discriminant your delta is equal to zero that's when your roots are equal meaning that you only have one root okay so we have that minus x squared therefore minus x squared plus 4x plus 16 minus k equals to zero okay, let's go back just to double check yes minus it minus k correct For this to have only one root, for this to have one root, one root and equal roots, that means exactly the same. Our delta, the discriminant, must be equal to zero. Now let's equate, okay, now let's find our discriminant, okay. We need A, B, and C in order to figure out what the discriminant is. Now, A is negative 1, B is 4, and C is 16 minus K. 4, 16 minus K. The discriminant, therefore, B squared minus 4AC must be equal to 0, meaning that B squared, that is 4 all squared minus 4. A is negative 1. And then C is 16 minus K. That must be equal to 0. All right, now 16 plus 4 times 16 minus K must be equal to 0, meaning that, okay, 16 plus 4 times 16 is, that is equal to 64 minus 4K equals to zero. 16 plus 64, that is equals to 80. Therefore, 80 minus 4k equals to zero. Okay, you can take the 4k to the right hand side. 80 equals to 4k. Now let's make k the subject of the formula. Divide both sides by four. And that leaves us with these two cancel out. Okay. That leaves us with 80 divided by 4. That is equals to 20. Therefore, 4, 2x plus k equals to 0. To be a tangent to f k must be twenty. And there you go, we've come to the end of this question paper and the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.